Welcome tonight. It's good to see family, um, and it's good to be together on this Ash Wednesday. And um, it's also so good to know that we are among so many Christians across the world who have done this today, some on their lunch hour, um, some, you know, on the other side of the world, um, already sleeping and soon to be seeing Thursday. Um, we are joined um, with Christians worldwide who honor our Lord and Savior this day. Miss Beverly and I asked her if I could share this, and she said yes. And I like talking with Beverly um, in the past and, and tonight about her Catholic background. Um, and I said, you like, do you like this service? She said, yes. I said, I like this service too. I said, in fact, and Carolyn, you and I have talked about this before, how much, um, how special it is to, to have days that other Christians celebrate across the world. And, and not just other Protestants, but other Catholics, anyone who calls Jesus Lord. Um, and, you know, it's just so nice to be in unity and um, to know that Jesus in heaven is looking down at all these ashes on foreheads and watching us go the season of Lent and um, going through Holy Week all in unity. And so I'm thankful for that tonight and I'm thankful that you could be here um, so that we could honor our Lord together. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you are holy, and you are our friend. You are high and lifted up, and yet you walk beside us and hold our hands. May you find our worship pleasing tonight. We do not want to shout Hosanna and hallelujah and he is risen without honoring what you did to reach that point, the obedience to the Father. So tonight as we remember the beginning of that long path toward the cross, hear our prayer as we too seek to know what it's like to sometimes bear your cross here on earth, but that you are with us, holding our hands and promising the hope of Easter and the resurrection. But tonight, God, we just ask that you calm our spirits and you get our attention through something tonight that we can carry on this journey we call Lent. Thank you, Jesus, that you have done it before us and that you go through it again with us. In the name, in your name we pray, amen, amen. A scripture reading from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 12 through 17. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, Bring together the elders, 
gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? I'd like for us to stand as we sing our first hymn tonight, The Old Rugged Cross. <clears throat> Thank you. If you will look in your bulletin, you'll find a responsive reading that I'd like for us to share together, another really um, special Ash Wednesday passage um, from the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter, 12 verses. And I'll begin, and if you'll just, I, I know this is a little bit long for responsive reading, so it could be that we, that you might get out of sync some as you're trying to read together, but it, God doesn't really matter, right? We just do our best. Um, so uh, let us begin. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them.
Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. Your people we will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets and dwellings. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Like I said before, I just say again, um, and we all know each other pretty well. We've been knowing each other for a while now, and y'all know how much I love the circle of the church calendar, the, the circle of the, of the church seasons, and, and finding our stories inside of God's big story, year after year, in different ways. How does my story fit on this part of the calendar, or this part of the calendar? And here we are again on Ash Wednesday, um, and Lent has come to us again. And as we were thinking earlier, we're connected with this church universal across the world who's marking this holy day. Um, the last time, think about this, the last time we gathered together for this day, not virtually but in person, was February the 25th, 2020. Olivia, how old are you right now? How old are you right now? 10. So, and Emily, how old are you? 14. So you were 12 and you were 8, roughly. Cammy was 4, about to turn 5, and Malachi was 7. EJ, you were probably 7. Josh, you had just been born. <laughs> Madison was about 2. No, yeah, 2 and a half. Time has really passed us. Um, when we met that day, um, I don't know if you can remember being here, but just about a week after that is when the world shut down, pretty much, um, in early March. Um, these past two years have changed us forever, would you say? And so we approach, I think, this Ash Wednesday differently. There are loved ones who aren't with us. There are dear church friends who are now among the cloud of witnesses with us tonight. We are aware of how fragile and short life really is, and we are aware of our own mortality and the mortality of those we love. And that is the story of Ash Wednesday, but boy, I think we really get it now. And we're so aware of our need for God. 
Ash Wednesday marks for Christians around the world the beginning of the 40-day season of Lent, the necessary preparation for Easter, the Holy Easter. Um, you'll see I put um, a couple of images on our, our um, table, communion table here. The one here with the wooden um, back was uh, Jesus carrying the cross that was made by a Korean artist that Dave brought back from one of his trips to South Korea. Um, over here, an Italian um, artist depicted this crucifix. And it's just to know that this image is in all cultures all across the world, is, and to see it in another culture is a pretty powerful, um, pretty powerful thing. The history of Lent is rooted in Jesus' fast for 40 days in the wilderness when the church decided, hey, we'll do, let's do a Lenten season. Um, it, it was striking to see that Jesus had, in a sense, his own Lenten season. Um, when the scripture tells us, interestingly, that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, does that ever perplex you a little? The Spirit led him there into the wilderness before his public ministry began. And for those 40 days and nights, we know he was um, in quite a wilderness. Um, and uh, tempted by the devil, never, you know, always having scripture to say right back, but in his own um, true wilderness season. So it's, it's nice to know that we parallel that, um, the, you know, in a sense. The ashes that some churches use on this day, and I remember us first saying this down at a Shrove Tuesday, one of our pancake suppers, when we were first getting into the Shrove Tuesday stuff about, um, and the significance of the palm branches and where the ashes come from. Now these ashes didn't come from that, that and many, many churches just use regular ashes, but a lot of churches take the palm branches from the, previous year's Palm Sunday and and burn the, those palm branches and use those ashes symbolically in their Ash Wednesday service. Don't you just love that? <laughs> More rich meaning. Um, the powerful symbolism reminding us of how quickly our hosannas uh, here in Easter Cantata here, Sharon, our hosannas can turn to crucify him. Reminding us of our sin and our mortality. Ashes were used in ancient times to express grief. We know that, right? Um, in 2 Samuel, Tamar, um, it is written that Tamar sprinkled ashes on her head, tore her robe, and with her face buried in her hands went away crying. And the story there in 2 Samuel. Ashes were used to express sorrow for sins and faults. Job repents in dust and ashes. Jeremiah calls his people to repentance saying, roll in the ashes. A lot of biblical references and why the um, early church would pick up on using an Ash Wednesday. Jesus um, speaks of this public practice interestingly in Matthew and in Luke um, when he said if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon they would have repented long, long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And let me ask you, we often think that ashes mark the beginning of a season of what will I give up, right? Um, what am I going to give up? What am I going to sacrifice during this Lenten season? Um, will it be coffee or sweets or french fries or Facebook? Or <laughs> um, and Lent can certainly be those things, right? And that can be good. But I bet many of you have thought about how much more rich it can be and it can offer us so much more. When I woke up yesterday morning and I was checking my emails, I was so struck by the words of a lady named Maria Kressler. I'm gonna read these to you. She's the executive director of a retreat center in Atlanta. Um, the center's name is the Ignatius House. And this, this is what she wrote. And I thought, wow, that's it. Um, and so this was written yesterday. So she says, another Lent begins tomorrow, but 2022 can be like no other. Make the next 40 days prayerfully powerful in a new way. 
don't simply give something up. Instead, now catch these words, fast from what paralyzes you from embracing Christ's example. Isn't that nice? God, we want to fast from what paralyzes us from embracing Christ's example. Is it fear or pride or a grudge? She goes on to say, and feast on trust. Jesus' offer of companionship now, making burdens light, and Jesus' offer of peace ahead that surpasses all understanding. She goes on to say, it's hard to move from one global crisis to another. Would you say that's kind of where we are as we think of Ukraine tonight and the escalating tensions there, the Christians there, just all the people there, the innocent people there. Um, so it's hard to move from one global crisis to another. Challenges such as pandemic, inflation, and war can drain our well of hope. Yet God gives us the freedom to choose how we'll respond. God offers to work with us, through us, and in us if we accept the invitation. Through us, God can glorify any situation. Those were her words. Um, feast from what paralyzes us from embracing Christ. I mean, fast from what paralyzes us from embracing Christ's example. May it be so, Eau Claire Baptist Church, that through us, God can glorify all the situations that we are in as individuals, families, and a church family. What will we choose this day to fast from? What is it that paralyzes us from embracing Christ's example? As we turn now to a time of silent meditation and confession, let us not fear this season of repentance, for we do not serve a God of wrath, but instead a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, a God who relents from punishing. I recently was telling my kids about this poem that I've never fully read, but it was written in the 1800s by um, an Englishman named Francis Thompson. And here's the title of the poem and you'll see why it became relevant in our house. <laughs> it's called The Hound of Heaven. Has anybody heard of this poem? <laughs> the Hound of Heaven. I've always been fascinated by the title and the comparison of God to a hound. Um, and it's a long poem and it was written in the 1800s and it's um, written in sort of the, the, the language of England, um, I mean our language, but a little, you know, cumbersome to just sit and read. Um, but I recently read something on it, and um, let me ask you this. Have you ever had a dog that follows you from sun up to sundown? <laughs> Does anybody raise your hand if you've ever had that? Malachi and Cameron, do we have a dog that follows us around? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The Strums have a new pup named Jesse, and he is my constant shadow. Jesse became a new baby in our house in September, and um, this poem has come to light even more now with Jesse at my heels, and I'm reminded that God's love, God's presence, God's pursuit of each of us is just like this endless and on our heels, closer than our shadow. And I really have thought about that as it took some getting used to. I mean, literally, he is very much follows me everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the hound of heaven. God never lets us go. Nothing separates us from God. Um, and that's the endless pursuit of God's saving grace. God pursues and pursues and pursues until God captures. And then God says, yes. Um, it is this kindness of God that the gospel writer Luke says brings us to repentance. Have you seen that little verse in Luke? 
They've made a praise and worship song about it. Amanda, have you heard that? It's your kindness, Lord, that brings us to repentance. It's not God's wrath. It's not fearing God so much. I guess there's some of that, you know? I mean, but it's God's kindness and love that makes us want to be better. It makes us want to change. So in this season of Lent and on this Ash Wednesday, that's the God that we draw close to. So we welcome this gift of confession, this gift of grace. Magnetically drawn by God's kindness and God's love, we take time now to confess our sins. Would you read silently as I read aloud the prayer of confession um, in, your, in your bulletin? Merciful God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, your son, and our high priest. We confess that there are times when we go against your hopes for us as your people. We confess that there are times when we go against your word for us. In silence, O oh Lord, hear us as we confess those things we have done and those things we have neglected to do. Times when we have failed you and each other. Amen.
We will turn now to the time in our service where we will um, bless the ashes and partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, you'll find the words of the blessing of the ashes also printed in your bulletin. Um, and then I'll say a few words about um, the Lord's Supper and we will move from that into just a, a quiet time together um, while Fred plays some music where um, I'll place the ashes on your forehead and then um, Richard and Sandy are gonna help um, serve the Lord's Supper. And if you will just do that as one fluid motion here and there's a little trash can here, we can throw our, our things away in um, here at, at the end of the pew. May these ashes be to us, O oh God, an acknowledgement of our wrongdoing and our acceptance of your forgiveness. In these ashes are our prejudices, our impatience, the times we have turned our backs on the suffering of others, our neglect of the environment, our indifference, our materialism, our greed, our hypocrisy, our envy, all of our sins. In these ashes of repentance are the seeds of our forgiveness and our transformation. For you, God, always accept us and forgive us. Through our repentance and forgiveness comes transformation. May you, God, create within each of us a clean heart and a new and right spirit. Amen. So after we receive the ashes and we think about these things that are heavy and but so necessary, we then will be nourished by the Lord's Supper. Thanks be to God that the church is still celebrating this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sacrament because we need the daily bread of God's word, um, of worship, but of this bread and of this cup. The reminder um, that God, God's body, Jesus' body, was broken for us and his blood was shed for us. So remember these words tonight I'm reading from Mark, the 14th chapter, the 22nd verse. On the night before Jesus was crucified, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day, until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
for you to stand now as we sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. to remain standing for our closing prayer. This prayer represents the love of three people who repented and believed the gospel. And let's pray now with this prayer. Oh Jesus, who was despised and rejected, you were silently led to Golgotha as a lamb to the slaughter. You poured out your life for our redemption. Our souls cry out, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. With your blood, you have purchased those from every tribe and language and nation. Precious Lamb of God, we are speechless when we think of how you voluntarily surrendered yourself for the sins of all people in the world. Amazing love that exceeds all others May we love as you have loved us. And may we diligently work to take your message of redemption to the ends of the earth. We pray this in that powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.